Manchester United's academy might be in one of the best positions it has been in for a very, very long time. Really overcoming the turmoil of just a couple of years ago. When we had John Murdo, we had Nicky Butt infighting in the academy. A lot of changes coming within. Very, very exciting times ahead for Manchester United's academy. And some of the players at the minute, they really are taking Manchester United's first team by storm. Garnacho and Manu, two players, really, really making a big, big difference. I think Garnacho is maybe been one of the best attacking players at the club this year. I don't think that's an exaggeration to make, even though he has had times where he struggled. He struggled for goals and assists. The moments Garnacho can come up with are genuinely different gravy. We've seen that there with the overhead against Everton. We've seen that there with his goals against Galatasaray. The confidence, the aura around Garnacho. There definitely is a superstar in the making there. No doubt about it, in my opinion. But I think Manu's maybe a much, much bigger talent. I mean, got all the headlines, got all the attention and has the fan base talking and he hasn't had any big moments. And that's just because Kobe Manu has walked in as an 18-year-old to this team, took the team by the scruff of the knack and said, I am the best midfielder in this club, in my position. I'm going to play. And look at the difference he makes on that pitch. So composed. He looks like a player who is 28, 29, not 18 years old. He genuinely knows where to be, what to do, where to drop. And I really, really cannot wait to see what Kobe Manu does throughout the rest of his career. But look, we knew about these players. Let's have a look at some of the other players because this academy is doing so well this season. The under-18s, 11 matches played, 11 wins, 37 goals scored, only 7 conceded. They are absolutely turning things up. Of course, we've won the Youth Cup in recent seasons as well. Really, really golden generations coming through at Carrington. And I want to look at some of the best players coming through, some players we want to keep an eye out on. And one of those is a guy I've been talking about for a while. It's Shell Lacey. Shell Lacey, young right winger, can play on the inside as well operate maybe as an attacking midfielder I think it's because his best kind of area is to attack the sort of right half space in that sort of channel area really two footed really has nice turn of pace nice low centre of gravity everything you could want in a modern day winger Shell he has and he can do it inside he reminds me of Foden in a lot of ways Really, really top, top level player there. Maybe the only problem we have with Lacey is his current injury and the physicality issues. But I think he will grow. I think he'll grow into his body. I think he will get stronger and I think he'll be much harder to knock off the ball. Hopefully he recovers from this injury in enough time to come in and maybe make a difference. You could maybe look at preseason if you are Shell Lacey, target that. And I think across the last couple of seasons, we've had players break through at least one a season. First season under Ten Hag was Garnacho. Second season, of course, it's been Cobby Mountie. Could next year be Shell Lacey's year? I think it depends on his recovery. I think it depends on how he finishes the season when he does come back. But really, what a player we have in Chelsea. But Chelsea is not the only one. And at 15 years old, we have Amir Ibrahimovic as well. I've really bad. I know I've badly pronounced that name. I really do apologize. But genuinely, a top top quality young player here as well. The talent that Lacey and this kid have combined, man, we could be set for a long, long time. Certainly in the creative areas, really, really, what a top player. And I'm just so excited to see what he's going to do. Playing at the minute in the under-16s, I think he can make that jump to the under-18s as well. I think that team's ready to have a player like that in it. And I think in terms of the quality that team is showing and the form, it's probably a good time to get him in. I really do think so. And I think that's a good sign when you have 15-year-olds playing under-18s. That's a good sign because they are able to come in and play beyond their, their years. And I think we've seen the same with Manu, we've seen the same with Shea Lacey. Let's get him into this team as well. But look, they're not the only players as well. I think Isaac Hansen Aaron, really exciting young player. And look, at the minute, things look kind of positive with the contract situation. And that maybe is something we haven't been able to say for a while. And I hope that he does sign a new contract and get integrated into this team. Because I think alongside Manu, you've got to unbelievably talented young midfielders. Now, I think Hanson Aaron is a little bit older, so I think he's coming into that kind of time in his career where he needs to start playing football. And if it's going to be here, if he's going to break in at Manchester United, fantastic. If that means a loan deal, if that means going somewhere else for his own development, I completely understand. I just hope it works out at United because what a player we have in our hands. I want to see more of him. I want to see him breaking into this team. And the glimpses we've had in pre-seasons gone by... I think we've seen a lot from this kid and I think we're going to see a lot more in the future. Look, they're not the only players to look out for. Plenty more to keep an eye out on as well. If we're looking at goalkeepers, Harrison looking really, really good as well. Um, Gis Fitzgerald, definitely a young, talented player. Kind of in that number six position, maybe maybe he would work well with Kobe Mane in that sort of area, but you are questioning physicality. Obviously, young player can still grow, can become much stronger physically and these kind of 
physical issues, a lot of them will go away in time. A lot of young players, look, when they come in, they get knocked off the ball easy. Just look at this picture of Garnaccio when he started. Compared to Garnaccio now, they do grow up. They put on the mass, they get on the strength, and then they become harder to knock off the ball. Not everybody can be Kobe Manu, that has to be expected, but certainly a top, top talent in Jace Fitzgerald as well. I mean, I think there's other players as well. I think the Fletcher brothers are looking very good. Obviously, Jack Fletcher caught the eyes really playing in the Youth Cup this season. Long, a tall, talented attacking midfield player. Long legs in the box. It can be very effective for an attacking player. Sometimes it doesn't look too orthodox. We see usually the smaller players playing in the number 10 kind of position. But man, Jack Fletcher does look like a top, top level player as well. I think all things considered, you're looking at a really talented crop of players. I mean, you're looking at the likes of Alvaro Fernandez potentially going to make way for somebody like um, Amas coming through at left back. That sort of tells you everything you need to know about the talent of this team. Because Alvaro Fernandez will go on to do things in football. He's a really good player and he will be a big left back either for Benfica or even for United moving forward, depending on how that loan deal goes, if the option to buy is took up. Who knows? But I do seriously think you're looking at a genuine golden generation at Manchester United. And I think it's really exciting. I think as the Ineos rebuild continues and it begins to really start to take shape and take process, they might look internally as well to, so to solve these issues and to solve the squad um, quality and the, qu the squad depth issues. They might start looking towards the academy more and more so as well. And with all these young players coming through, who can blame them? Honestly, I am very excited for the future of Manchester United's academy. For these young players, I think we're looking at a golden generation. But guys, as always, make sure to tell me your thoughts down below in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you guys are new. And I'll catch everyone in the next one.